Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about parallelogram properties. It's important to note that most people think I I think of a parallelogram and they think of this kind of slanted rectangle shape. That's definitely what comes to mind for me. But you know, it's important to note that parallelograms, there's actually four different types. So there's um, squares, uh, rectangles, rhombus, and rhomboid. Those are the four different types of parallelograms. These are the six different ways that we can prove if something is a parallelogram. This first way, notice that we have opposite sides here that are parallel and opposite sides here that are parallel. So that's what that little arrow, like little arrow tick mark means on these two sides. What it's saying is that this side is parallel to this side. And when you have that little double tick, that's just saying that this side is parallel to that side. Um, these are not parallel to each other. That's why they move they uh, use little different um, additional tick marks, added tick marks. So for this one, it's very similar. Uh, if you can prove that two opposite sides are congruent to each other, then you can also prove a parallelogram. So remember, congruent means equal to, essentially. So we're saying that the length of this side, if we this one has a little straight tick mark and this one has a straight tick mark, what we're saying is the length of this side is equivalent to the length of this side. So if this one was 10, this side's also 10, okay? And then the same thing with this one with the double tick mark. So we're just using a double to show it's a different value, but this side is congruent to this side. So if this one was, say, six, so is that one. So if you can prove that two sets of opposite sides are congruent, you've got a parallelogram. For this one, a little bit different, we're talking about the angles now. Notice we're using those angle arc marks. So we use that to prove, um, to show congruency. So if this angle is congruent to this angle, they'll have equivalent, um, so notice they have two little arc marks each, right? So whatever this angle is, if it's congruent to this angle, and whatever this angle is, if it's congruent to that angle, so we've got opposite angles being congruent to each other, then we've proved a parallelogram. For this one, notice that I've got a little arrow pointing that if this angle and this angle, they're not the, the same in this case, they're, they're clearly different, that's an obtuse and that's an acute angle, but if these two angles are supplementary, so we have to remember what does that word supplementary mean? That means that they add to 180 degrees. So if you can take this angle and this angle and together they equal 180 degrees, then you've proved a parallelogram. We also have this way. So if you're para if you're, um, the shape you're looking at has diagonals, in a true parallelogram, the diagonals would bisect each other. So let's, let's break that down. If we're looking at this line right here, this diagonal, and I said that this diagonal bisected it. Remember, bisect in math means that it cut completely, perfectly in half. So if this line is bisecting this line, then it creates two equal parts. That's like a cut mark right down the middle so that we have two equal parts and vice versa with the other line. So for this, di um, for this diagonal, if this one's bisecting it, that means it's cut it into two equal congruent parts. So in a parallelogram, diagonals drawn across should bisect each other. They create equal parts. And so again, if you've got the equal parts there, then you know you've got a parallelogram. The final way we're going to look at is if you can prove that just one pair of sides, so just one opposite sides, if they are both parallel to each other. Remember, that's what that little arrow means, if they are both parallel to each other as well as congruent to each other, um, meaning they would have the same length, then you can also prove a parallelogram. So we don't have to necessarily know stuff about these sides. If we know this one is both parallel and congruent, you've proved a parallelogram. 
Okay, so for these examples, we're going to use that information that we learned on the first page, and we're going to use it to write and solve some equations um, based on those knowledge of the different parallelogram properties. Looking at this first example, so we're going to look at what would x have to be to create a parallelogram. Okay, so if we're saying, okay, we want this shape to be a parallelogram, what would x need to be to make it a, a true parallelogram? So in this case, we know that opposite sides would have to be congruent to each other, right? And we already see that here, that this side's 10 and that side's 10. So those sides are good. Um, and then for this one, we know that this side would have to be congruent to that side, right? For it to be a true parallelogram. So we can make that an equation to figure out what x would need to be. So we could say, okay, 2x would have to equal 8 this side would have to equal that side. And then from here, that's a one step equation to solve it. So two, this is two times x, right? So we need to undo times by division. And what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. And x would equal eight divided by two, which is four. Okay, so in this case, we know x would have to equal four to create a parallelogram. In this example, Notice we've got angles up here, um, but they are both on the top, right? They're not like opposite angles, right? They're both on the top. So remember that rule with the parallelograms that this angle and this angle would have to add to 180 degrees in order to be a parallelogram. So what we can do is say, okay, 100 degrees plus... 2x would have to give me 180 degrees. And then from here, we can solve for x. Um, this one would be a two-step equation, so we want to isolate x. We'd want to subtract 100. So at this point, we've got 2x equals 180 minus 100 would be 80. And then we'd want to divide to isolate our x. So x would equal eight divided, or sorry, 80 divided by two, which is 40. All right, for this third example, so notice we've got some parallel marks. So we're saying that this side is parallel to this side, which isn't enough, right? In order to prove a parallelogram, remember on that last example that we did down here, we have to also know that this side would have to be congruent to this side. And if we have those two pieces, then we know it's definitely a parallelogram. So I'm gonna need to set my one side of 10x plus two equal to my other side of 9x plus seven. And then I wanna solve for x. So um, in this case, I've got x on both sides of the equation, so I wanna get them together. I'm gonna move the smaller x value over to the larger x value, which leaves me with 10 minus nine, which is just one x plus two equals seven. And then of course I wanna subtract two to get x alone. And x would equal seven minus two, which is five. So in order for this to be a true parallelogram, x would have to be five. Okay, for this one, we've got a diagonal situation. Okay, so we are wanting to know if this was a true parallelogram, right, then and I already see that this side is creating a bisector, right? But for it to be a true parallelogram, we know that this side would have to also be congruent to that side, right? Those diagonals have to bisect each other. So we would have to say, okay, 3x equals x plus 12. So we would wanna subtract x from this side bring it over to the other side. So 3x minus 1x is 2x equals 12. Divide by 2 to get x alone. And x would equal 12 divided by 2, which is 6. So in order for us to create a parallelogram here, x would have to be 6. 
And on this last example, notice we've got opposite angles this time. So up here we had angles that were on the same side, right? But now we have opposite angles. So remember the rule, opposite angles would have to be congruent, right? So this one would have to be the same um, degree measure as this one. So in order to do that, we need to set these two angles equal to each other. So uh, to get x alone here, we'd need to divide by 8. So 68 divided by 8 is actually 8.5. And I know some people are thinking, is that okay that we get a decimal? I get asked that question as a teacher all the time, and that's totally fine, okay? Um, so just keep that in mind. Don't ever, you know, freak out necessarily because you get a decimal. You just need to look at it in the context of, of what they're asking you. So what I've done is I've given you two pictures, two different situations, and you're going to be answering that same question we did on the last page. So what would X have to be to create a parallelogram? I will post the answers in the video description below. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.